Up next, a look at a two-player card game, The Fox in the Forest. Uh, the Fox in the Forest was designed by Joshua Burgo and features art by Jennifer L. Meyer and Keith Pichirny. It was co-produced by two publishers, Foxtrot Games and Renegade Game Studio. Uh, that is North American. I'm not sure if it's published by other publishers, other parts of the world. Uh, it was published here in North America in 2017. Uh, plays two players only. This is a two-player exclusive card game. And it takes about half an hour to play through a full round of games. Now, normally, we'd point you to an unboxing video right now, but we don't have one. No, we don't, actually, because this is, I think, the first time ever I'm reviewing a game I don't actually own. Uh, the copy of Fox in the Forest we have is on loan from a local gamer, Terry Latorco, who was awesome enough to lend it to me to take part in the Renegade Games Worldwide Play Day last Wednesday, uh, which you can see our video of and everything. So it's not my copy, so I didn't get to open it, so no unboxing video. Regardless, this is a card game, so I'm guessing you get cards? Uh, yep, a uh, total of 33 cards, actually 35 cards, really. 33 cards split over three different suits. Uh, the suits are moons, bells, and keys, and then there's two summary cards, so 35 cards total. Uh, there are some scoring tokens, which I would assume came on a punch board originally. Uh, component quality is, I would say, standard. Uh, they're cards. They feel like cards. They look like cards. Uh, the chits are fine. Uh, I do want to note, though, that the artwork is fantastic. I really like the art on the cards, though it's not on all of them. So half the cards just look like standard playing cards, and the other half have artwork on it. It's the odd-numbered cards. And they have that really good fairy tale theme to them. All right, so we've got three suites of 11 cards each. What are we doing with them? All right, so this is a two-player trick-taking game, which I know... I assume you're like me and you're thinking, how the heck does trick-taking work with only two players? And that's exactly what I thought when I first heard about this game. And I'll explain quickly how it works, and I think I think you'll get it. It's really kind of brilliant the way it works. So you start each round dealing 13 cards for each player. That leaves seven cards in the deck. You're going to flip over the top card of the deck. called It's called the Decree card. That sets the trump. So one of the three suits is trump. The non-dealer is going to lead, and you're going to play 13 tricks. You're going to play all 13 cards in your hand. Now, at this point, standard trick-taking rules. You have to follow suit. If you don't have the lead suit, you can throw off suit. Uh, the winning trick is the one with the highest trump, or if no trump has been played, the highest card in the lead suit. Pretty standard trick-taking. I just explained euchre, spades, hearts, trick-taking, exactly the same. So what is it that makes this different than all the other games you just listed? All right, so what we've got here is that, first off, every odd-numbered card has a special ability. And that happens the instant you play the card down. So, for example, the one is the swan card. What that lets you do is you get the lead in the next hand, even if you lose the trick, which you're probably going to with a one card. The fox card is the number three, for example, and that lets you swap a card in your hand with the decree card. So you can potentially swap the trump in the middle of a trick. Another example is the woodcutter, which lets you take a card from the top of the deck and replace and place one of the cards in your hand in the bottom of the deck and so on. The, the seven, 11, and nine also do things. So there's unique abilities on half the cards. So there's a little bit of Goris Maximus in there almost, yes. except it's a two-player game, and there's actually more ways to play with the uh, play with your with your hand. Yes, yeah, exactly. And then the other thing that makes this work is the scoring, because if the whole goal was to just take every trick every round, it would be simple and probably not all that much fun. So each round has thirteen tricks, right? Thirteen cards in your hand. You're going to play through all three, and in general, you want the majority you're actually aiming to win seven to nine of the tricks, and that's going to get you six points. That's the biggest point value in the game. Now, your opponent's only going to get one to three points, depending on what they got in their number of tricks, the opposite of it. The thing is, you don't want that one more. You don't want 10 to 13 tricks, because if you do, and this is going to the fairy tale theme, you're considered too greedy, and you get zero points, whereas your opponent is considered humble and scores six points. And it's that having to balance how many takes tricks you take combined with those odd number card power abilities that makes Fox in the Forest Fox in the Forest, not just a standard trick-taking game. And that's what makes it work with only two players. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the mechanics, and, and you'll you'll get a little bit more, but what is the theme of Fox in the Forest? Uh, it's, a, it's a fairy tale theme, so I admit I didn't do the click-through. There's a bit of a fairy tale story, a poem that's in the game. And if you go to uh, Renegade Games' website, you can get the full poem. It was written for the game, or the game was written for the poem. Like, it's not like a popular medieval poem. It's not like a, a Brothers Grimm-specific takeoff. 
but there's foxes, there's um, swans, there's a witch. I, I admit, I didn't do the research. You know me, my love of theme. <laughs> I gotta say, the art looks great. Yeah, like you got and the nice part is the the suits are different. So like a three is always a fox, but the fox of moons is this like dark shadowy fox. The fox of um, uh, bells looks like your standard red fox. And off the top of my head, I can't remember what the key fox looks like, but it's unique art for each of the three suits. And like I said, there, then there's this whole poem that this is all tied to in some way. And I admit it, I, I'm I'm not a th huge theme person, so I just enjoy playing the trick taking game. All right. So a full game is played to 21 points, and so far that seems to take just under about half an hour from when we played it. Uh, we've yet to see any runaway leaders. And games seem to take about three to five hands to get to that 21 points. And it does seem to go back and forth. It's not like, you know, someone gets six, the next turn they get six, the next turn they get six, and they just steamroll it. Overall, I gotta say, I am impressed by this game. I am really, uh, this is one I skipped. I completely overlooked this. and uh, It came out in 2017. I don't know if podcasts talked about it or not. If they did, they probably said, two-player trick-taking game, and I just checked out. I'm like, eh, whatever. I, how can a trick-taking game be good with two players, right? It's like if you say two-player auction game, I'm probably not going to be interested. But now that I've seen how well Fox in the Forest does this, it's now on my wish list. So like I said, I don't actually own one of this game. But the other thing with Fox in the Forest that really is a big draw for me is it's one of those two-player, small-footprint, strategic game uh, that are the type Deanna and I love. These are the kinds of games that we pack when we leave the house. This isn't something we're probably going to go in our basement and play, but this is the kind of game like the Duke or Onitama or Hive that we're going to throw in Deanna's purse and we're going to go to the Sandwich Brewing Company and have a couple pints of beer and play some Fox in the Forest. Or we're going to bring it with us when we go on vacation to play at the hotel or at, at, the, at a bar. Um, this, this is it's just one of those games that hits that sweet spot. And to me, because of that, I actually went back to our two-player date night game article and added this game on the list because I think it definitely belongs there with other games like the Duke and Onitama. All right. Now, if you dig card games, like trick-taking card games, this is a no-brainer to me. Like, if you like Euchre or Spades, Hearts, just pick this up. You're gonna If you have someone to play them with, you're going to dig Fox in the Forest. It's a, it's a nice twist on those kind of games. Now, if you're not, like, to me, trick-taking is ubiquitous, but I know there are people out there who have never played a trick-taking game. I think this would be a great intro to trick-taking especially with only having two people to worry about in two hands. You don't have to worry about trying to remember what your partner has or anything like that. So I think it'd be a really good intro to trick-taking. I also think it played well with kids, though I have to admit I didn't get a chance to try it myself. Um, though I do know there's some people out there that don't like card games, don't like trick-taking games at all. I, this isn't going to win you over, I don't think. This isn't going to sell you on playing a trick-taking game. But otherwise, uh, this comes very strongly recommended for me. If you've never played a trick-taking game, I wonder, what was your high school like? Do they still play cards in high school? I don't know. I've, it's been a I, long I don't know. time, but I, I can't imagine high school without card games at lunchtime now. I, I'm sure maybe they don't do that anymore, but... Maybe they don't. I don't. I just, I know I have met people where I've been like, blah, 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 trick-taking, and they went, what? Like, I, I can't even remember who. It was local. It was at the CG Realm. I remember Roger was also playing, and I was trying to teach, I think it was Goris Maximus. And there was someone who had not had experience or like like poker, spades, hearts. Like no, I never played any of those. So I had to explain like the, what trick meant and what right. taking a trick meant and what Trump meant when we're not talking about presidents. <laughs> All right. Well, for a more in depth look at the Fox in the Forest, you have a couple of options. For one, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com, click on reviews, read Mo's full review there, or head over to YouTube mm -hmm. where you can find an actual play video from last week's Renegade Games Worldwide Play Day. That video includes a teach of the game and a playthrough of two full rounds. 